Hi. In a recent video, I described the highlights of a build of a farm table and bench that I made for my granddaughter. I used dowels in that construction, uh, and it's the first time I really used dowels to any extent. And I uh, didn't have a dowel jig, so I made, uh, actually I made three that I used. All three of them were used, and uh, they worked out really well. I was pleased with the, uh, with the results I got with them. And uh, I found I really liked uh, dowels. Then uh, one of the viewers asked why I didn't make a self-centering dowel jig. I replied that I'd never had a need for a self-centering dowel jig. Uh, and that uh, if I ever did, I might consider making one. Well, recently my wife requested uh, two counter stools, she calls them, to go uh, at the counter in the kitchen between the kitchen and the breakfast room. She wanted them 24 inches high. She didn't want a back on them. So uh, she had a picture off the internet. And uh, I looked at that and said, hmm, I can make that. So I got to thinking about it. And uh, there's going to be uh, four legs with uh, rails between them. And, and looking at that, I decided I really needed a self-centering dowel jig. I looked around the internet and really didn't find anything I was uh, interested in making and couldn't come up with an idea of my own. So I just decided, well, as much as I'm enjoying doing dowels anyway, maybe I should just go ahead and buy a self-centering dowel jig. So I did. This is the one I got. Uh, there's no name on it, although it does say Eagle over here in, in the instructions. Uh, there are quite a few of these that are available. Uh, different. Uh, they look very similar and probably are almost exactly the same. The uh, as I looked around for them, I saw that there were several different models available. Some of them have uh, two holes that are threaded to accept inserts. I've got quarter inch inserts in here. And then over on this side, they would have uh, a 17, 6, 17, would have a 7 16th inch hole and a half inch hole that aren't threaded. You just use those to drill through. Well, I, I wanted to be able to drill more than two holes at the time. Uh, with a self-centering jig. Uh, so I kept looking and I found uh, found some that had four holes that were threaded for inserts but interestingly they would still only include two or maybe three inserts of each size. Finally found one at Infinity Tools that includes four inserts in quarter inch, uh, five sixteenths inch, and three eighths inch. Uh, four of each to hold go into the threaded holes in the jig. I'll include a link in the description if uh, if you're interested in that. It is made in Taiwan, uh, but it came accurately adjusted. Uh, no problems with the uh, bushings being undersized. Drill bits fit them properly. It centers properly. Uh, the markings were accurate on it, uh, and and I'm very pleased with it. I went ahead and made uh, two of the counter stools that she was wanting. They turned out very good. Uh, and in, in using it, I decided I might be able to make, some, make it a little easier to use. One of the things about it, as it, as it comes, you're supposed to mark, you're supposed to mark your workpiece and I did that with a just a little piece of two pieces of wooden ruler that I trimmed down to the right width and put it on there and draw your line on either side and then match the line up with the lines in the jig. I hope you can see that inside there. Uh, that's the way I did the two counter stoves. It works. Uh, it's a little tedious. You've got to do your marking. You have to mark the opposing piece uh, where it's going to be joined. You have to transfer your marks across to it. Uh, it works. In fact, I was very pleased with the results. Uh, but I thought I could make things a little bit easier on myself. So I want to go over a couple of things I've done to my jig and made for it. First thing I did was put sandpaper, adhesive back sandpaper, on either side of the jaws. 
Now that makes it a little easier to clamp it down without it sliding around when you're putting pressure on it with the drill. Another thing I did was I've made three uh, locating pins uh, in all three sizes. Drop the pin in, uh, it goes all the way through. You can put that in a hole you've already drilled and locate the jig up and down your workpiece as, as needed and keep everything evenly spaced on the holes on it. You will notice this type of jig does not have a hole in the center. However, these are spaced so that if you drill, move it over and drill another hole, the five holes will come out evenly spaced for you. The bars that go through the end of it make it so that you can't get real close to the end of your workpiece if you're just trying to line up the, the workpiece to the end of the jig. You're, you're spaced in about an inch. That may work fine for you, but if you're, if you're using it on narrow stock and you need to get it in there, uh, you're not lined up with the end. You've got to line it up with the uh, marks. So, the uh, next thing I did was made a stop block to use with the jig. Just two quarter inch bolts through a piece of scrap and I used the jig to drill the holes through it. Put it through there, tighten it down with a couple of wing nuts. The length of the stop block is where I want it in order to be able to put two dial holes in the end of a workpiece about this wide and have them evenly spaced. Another thing I made was a distance gauge. I took a small piece of scrap wood, drilled a 3 8 inch hole with the dial jig, put the dial in, glued it, let it dry real good, drilled a quarter inch hole all the way through the length of the piece of scrap and then another quarter inch hole uh, up above the hole that goes through there. Went to the table saw and drilled and saw a kerf all the way through the piece of wood and it goes completely through the quarter inch hole. You take a dowel, stick the dowel in the hole, adjust it to where you want it to be and just tighten it down. May need a wrench to tighten it real tight, but I think that's going to work. Uh, then you can space the jig along your workpiece uh, that distance from this hole to your next hole uh, repetitively and accurately. I'm going to do another little quick project today to uh, show you how accurate this can be and how. Uh, the simple additions I made to this jig can make it easier to use. I got four legs cut up. This is all southern yellow pine. It's about 32 inches long. Uh, they're the same length, whatever they worked out to be. Uh, I've got ten. Actually, I don't need two of them. I've got eight spacers that'll go in them. And uh, simple construction. This will be a rail that will go in centered up here. There'll be another rail down here. Uh, and of course there and there there and there and then the next piece up you get the idea uh, I'll show you how I drill some of these holes now okay let's give this a try I added the blue tape to this so that I could keep the orientation the same. The 
the jig itself will center it this way but I want uh, and I want the holes drilled on this side referencing against this with the stop block And a few minutes later, I've got all the rails bored, and they don't look too bad. Now let's drill the dowel holes in the upper part of the leg. We're going to use the same two sleeves on the dowel jig. We're going to reference the end of the leg against the stop block again, just like we did on the rails. Slide it in place. In this case, we're going to need to do a light sanding on the dowel holes just to get the little burrs off. We don't want that to affect the centering of the jig on the, on the next, uh, next side. Well, what you get when you don't plan far enough ahead is you get dowel holes that intersect. Uh, I'll have to be real careful of that, but uh, maybe it won't be a problem. I'm going to continue. Okay, that's all four legs done. Okay, I've removed the stop block from the jig. I only want two holes, and so I put a piece of blue tape over it so that I won't drill in the wrong holes. I've got my distance gauge positioned at the end of the leg in the lower hole and I've adjusted the length of the rod, the dowel rod, to the length I want to, to place the bottom rail and I'm going to offset these rails so that I won't drill into the same holes again this time. Need a pair of legs with matching holes in it. Okay, time for a dry fit. I, uh, Inserted dowels into the rails and I took four of them to the disc sander and sanded a little bevel on that. I'll give you a close up of it. So I think that will solve the problem with the interference at the top. Let's see how this works out. In the, we're going to put the Top face up, the face with the blue tape on it is going up and that's going to the outside. I'm not uh, concerned with which rail goes where because I had all my rails the same size and drilled all the holes identically using the jig so everything should just match up no matter which no matter which rail I decide to put where all I'm concerned about is getting the faces in the right orientation Tape up and outside. Tape up and outside. 
broken outside. Outside. That's a nice dry fit, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I like it. Good deal. I gotta wait till tomorrow to do some gluing on it. Okay, I think we're ready for the glue up now. I have uh, used the router and, and made a 1 8 inch groove in the top inside of the rails to accept a tabletop clip that will hold it on that just goes in there and then that gets screwed to the top. So got that done. Got all the edges eased with a 1 8 inch round over bit uh, just to make it feel a little softer. I'm attaching the top, which is just a simple square piece off of the tube of 12, uh, using tabletop fasteners. Wanted to show you a few of the joints. They're all looking good. The old jig worked really great. I'm real pleased with it. I'm sure some of you done better joints, but for me, I've never done joints as good as this, and as many of them. The wife's already asked for a few more of these, and uh, the next ones will have a little more craftsman-style touches to them. This one's rather plain, but it was... Uh, it was mainly an exercise in using the attachments I made for the self-centering dial jig. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you uh, have a great day. And please like and subscribe if you did.